So everybody, they're coming in and they're saying, hi, I'm Mary. Hey, I'm Susan. Hello, I'm Nicole. Hi, I'm Teresa. So I was like, okay, don't say hi. Don't say hello. Okay? <laughs> and, you know, I was just in college and I was like, I took a, a public speaking class. It's like, if you want to catch people's attention, you either speak really low so they have to like lean in and hear what you're saying and I was like that's not me right or you gotta make a big splash right so we all standing in the line I step out of the line I step my feet I step <laughs> out forward and I say I am Takara Jones and I'm from Dayton Ohio and I'm weighing in at a whopping 180 <laughs> pounds and I'm big black beautiful and loving it and Michelle Mark was looking at that camera the whole time that baby looked up she said <laughs> thank you I said Hey Raindrops, now before we get into this video, I wanna to talk to you about joining my community. Yes, my YouTube community of subscribers. So make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. It helps build the channel and build our community. I love it when you guys comment and post. So remember, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Reality with the King marker. Say Watch reality out. with the king. <laughs> <laughs> reality, reality with the, with the king. king marker, Carlos. Reality with the king marker. Boom. Takara. <laughs> <laughs> Don't That's forget okay. the car, baby. I'll introduce myself. <laughs> no, well, Let it's my job my to throat. introduce no. <laughs> you. Welcome to Reality with the King, where I am here with my close friend, my bestie, my good Judy. We've been friends for like 20 years. We've been friends like 20 whole years. 20 solid years. Like back to the BET days. Back in the BET days. What was that, 52nd Street? No, 59th. 59th. <laughs> between, between, wait, was it 10th and 11th? Um, or 11th and 12th? 10th and 11th. 10th yes. and 11th. Yes. Yes, yes. Well, listen, <laughs> the top. Mm. Well, you know, some of us are verse, but you know, top. <laughs> It depends on the mood. <laughs> so give it so up for America's top model, Takara Jones. Yes, thank Round you. Round of applause. <laughs> you look amazing. Thank you. I do, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this hair. I'm loving my hair, too. Her name is Tazara Zolika. <laughs> yes, yes. And I bring her out because I worked hard on her. You know, as black women, our hair, you know, they done did documents and stuff yeah. about hair all the time. But hair is so important. I have coarse, real black girl hair, honey. And so it's been a journey to come and to appreciate my natural hair. And especially being in Hollywood, to step out and you're all This is all you? Yeah, go here. Bring your fingers through it. Ooh, get in the scalp. Ooh, touch it. She you know, that, that. That's a test. Oh, she liked it. Oh, that's it. I, I feel the scalp. Yeah, you can see the scalp. Ooh, see the scalp. Ooh, it is all your hair. She bounced back. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Magic? Is it jam? <laughs> yeah, all of, no, actually, I've been starting these new products called GoFinity. It's for your hair, your nails, collagen, everything. They've been growing my stuff. Yes. And I shaved it off because I got so much hair so thick. So even with half my hair shaved off, y'all got a whole undercut. Oh, this is amazing. Listen, baby. Thank you, Carlos. No, no, no <laughs> I'm, I'm good ass. Yes. This is, and it's funny because no one has this style. Mm. So what made you think of this? Well, because I wanted to wear my natural hair and I was wearing my afro. See, I got my little girl. I was giving all of this, right? I, I was do giving love your big afros. power to yes. the people, like natural hair. And I loved it and embraced it, but it was just so thick and so full and just so much of a maintenance. And then having to be in this business where people got to touch your hair, you got to lay it down, you got to put on wigs, you got to put on heat. I wanted something that I could do, that I could maintain, that I loved, and that I could control. And so when I named her, I started taking care of her. You got to put a name on her. I started giving her all the right ingredients that she need, making sure she got washed, making sure she was fed. You know what I'm saying? Talking to her, giving her affirmations Ooh, yes. and stuff. You see, she bounced. And what's her name she, again? Tazara Zolika. Where's she from? She's from Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Not with that name. <laughs> <laughs> we, both, we both from the hood. <laughs> well, no, you look amazing. Thank and you. what's funny about our friendship is not a lot of people know how close we are. Right. And like, we would run into each other at airports sometimes and we will like, <laughs> right? Like, yes. where are you going, Vegas? I'm going to Vegas, bitch. And like, we'll meet up in Vegas. We were in Miami a few weeks ago, but we couldn't like link up. Uh -huh. 
but you're always yeah. We did monthly like or like we used to meet up with the um whole old New York team and have dinners in L. A. Yes, like, we've always been in touch throughout the years. I remember when you first started this podcast, we were talking about it. Like our journey has just. Has been a long journey. Mm-hmm. We are so blessed. Mm-hmm. Yes, no, God we have seen a lot. We were living in New York at the same time, living in LA at the same time. Like we we've been wa- out here in this world, baby. Talk about our New York days. Ooh, honey. I'm we surprised I'm not pregnant with five kids. <laughs> New York was wild back in the two. It's when I mean New York was at its prime. I'm talking about like. We would go to like the Def Jam parties. Oh, we'll get into your story later, like <laughs> Rockefeller and, and some other situations. <laughs> but we were we'll like, we would go to the parties. We would go we, to the parties. It's when New York was popping. And you know what? Let me tell you something. I didn't even realize that, right? Because I'm from Dayton, Ohio. So I'm from the small little city. It's really a big town, small city, right? And so when I got on America's Next Top Model and then I moved to New York and I would start getting these invitations in the mail to go to like all the hottest parties. Like it would be like Ja or Jay or DMX or, you know, it would just be like Beyonce, like just all these hot parties. And I just thought because I worked at BET that this was like normal Mm -hmm. or that, you know, like I didn't realize. And I also didn't realize I was getting a special invitation to go to these parties because somebody was trying to woo, 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 woo me. Who? Mm-hmm. <laughs> my ex. You oh, know, my I Kaiser. Just, ah! I'm just going to throw <laughs> names out there. But I didn't know that he was... <laughs> that I was getting these invitation, invitations personally sent to me. I thought I was just a fly hot girl. But thank you. Thank you. Your shout out to him. You are still a fly hot girl. Always. And you always <laughs> will be one. So let's go back there because you are from Dayton, Ohio. I'm mm-hmm. from Detroit, Michigan. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like. To live in the Midwest, especially mm. back in our day where what you and I are blessed to do now was not even in the realm of possibilities. And you are a motherfucking star. Thank you. And always have been one. Did you know that being a black girl in Dayton and not had these dreams of being on television? Yes. And just to piggyback off of what you said, like these things weren't even imaginable when I, I actually, hmm. I actually wanted to get into the entertainment business when I was like in the third grade, okay? But I'm a, we're gonna, if we do, we can get back to that. But when I end up gaining weight and decided I want to be a model, and um, I was taking modeling classes, I was going to New York every year since I was like 14 to about 18 years old trying to become a model. And then I end up gaining weight, and then I um, actually signed on to be a plus size model. But when I gained my weight, I didn't see nobody who looked like me. I didn't see any plus size model. Plus size modeling wasn't like in my vocabulary. I didn't, we didn't have the Lane Bryans and the Ashley stores. So there was no one for me to um, look up to. Mm-hmm. And then I, I coined myself. I said, you know what? I'm going to be the first black plus size supermodel of the world. And baby, okay, 16 <laughs> pages in the towel. You vogue, honey. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Baby. But yeah, coming from Dayton, we just don't have those type of, that type of exposure. Or we don't even know that that type of world exists. Like, we shop at department stores, mm-hmm. like J.C. Penney's and Earl de Beerman's. We didn't know anything about Versace and Gucci and, you know, so all of this, none of this, none where I came from, I came from the projects, not even the hood. So it's the difference between projects <laughs> and the hood, baby. <laughs> Big difference. So you were raised in the hood? No, I'm a project baby. You're a project baby. Mm-hmm. And the projects in Dayton was like what? I think they liked all the projects. I've been to a few projects <laughs> in all around. <laughs> I've been to a few projects. I've been to some projects. In, in the, yeah, I think the projects is the projects. I think the difference between the projects and the hood is that projects is a location. There are buildings, you know, mm-hmm. a cluster of buildings that we're like, located in versus the hood is more of a neighborhood with maybe broken yes. down homes and stuff like that. But yeah, and then I think also coming from the projects, you want to lead the projects and make it to the hood. Like that's the next step and then make it oh, out to the Also, for people who live in the projects, the upgrade is living in the hood. Yeah, getting to the hood. Oh. Yeah, you want to lead a project, you want to get to the hood and then when you get to the hood, you learn that there's more Hopefully that, you know, yeah. you go to a suburb or you can leave the state. You can leave the country, hopefully. You know, I'm trying to leave the planet. <laughs> That's the way America's going, baby. <laughs> so when did you 
decide for yourself. Like you said, you started gaining weight. Mm -hmm. You knew since the third grade you, you wanted to be on television. Did you see somebody at that yes. age on TV? Oh, at the third grade, I was um, in elementary, and we had this speech contest. It was this poem contest. It's like the Annie May speech poem contest and this lady got up there and she did sojourner's truth and she was like that man over there said that a woman should be lifted over puddles and carried over you know and i was like she was just so captivating you know and i was like i want to be on stage i wanted i wanted to give that that feeling that she gave me i wanted to entertain like she sparked me wanting to be on the stage performing. Mm. And then from there, I went on to a performance school. I went to Stivers, which was a school for performing arts. I majored in dance and theater. And then I went to Sinclair Community College. I was um, on my way to go to Ohio State. And that's when I heard about America's Next Top Model. How old were you? <clears throat> I was 19. I was 19 years old. And what's crazy is... 19 at that time was considered to be a little bit old oh, to be yeah. a model, right? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So so what happened was when I was in the third grade and I decided, okay, I want to be an actress. This is where I wanted to start. I want to be an actress. I want to perform. And then I got um, I got involved in a... Um, in a community, a community service like acting groups. And we went around to different recreational centers and we did plays and we did dances and we performed for the community. And we put on this play about this woman's life. And I got cast to be the woman from like adolescence to preteen. And this other lady from New York who was from Dayton, who went to New York and was modeling and living this fabulous life. She was coming back to Dayton, Ohio to play this lady as an older woman. And um, when she met me, her name is Jamaica. When she met me, she was just captivated by me. And also, remember, I was from the project. So I, I had told her some things that were going on mm -hmm. in my personal life. And she had a heart for me. And she took me in and she would come there every summer. Or she would fly me out to see her. But she always just stayed in my life from that time on until this present time right now. But she hooked me up with her modeling coach and his name was Lucius. And at the time back then, see, I was like, I was about nine, nine years old, but about 12 is when she hooked me up with Lucius. And I didn't know Lucius was giving, you know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> you know, he'd be like, you little pretty bitch, uh -uh, put more makeup on. You can hold more than that, you little sassy ass. Uh -uh, I know you fucking, you know, he would be like, say all little crazy stuff to me. And I'd be like, huh? And he's like, no, you need more makeup, more makeup. Like he was just, he, I didn't know that he was getting me together, but yeah. honey, he was getting me together, like posing everything. And in exchange, I would like clean the studio and, you know, I would just help him around his studio. And he, in exchange, he would do photo shoots and teach me how to do my makeup and model and things like that. And so when I turned about 14, now that I've been practicing and doing, I would go to New York and I would go to the agencies. I would go to Ford and Lee, Will and Mina, and I would go in and they would look at my book. Okay, Supermodels, you better. Baby. Oh, you better. Oh, let's find my page. Uh, Thanks no. for the team. <laughs> but you will go to the agency, uh -huh. and it's real life. Like People be getting on Tyra, but I'll be telling them that Tyra is just depicting what really happened. Yeah. So at 14, when I would go to the agency, they would look through my book, and they'd be like, next. And then I would come back next summer, and they would... <laughs> Next. It was that cutthroat. Cutthroat. I mean, cutthroat. So. <laughs> but, but, but were you, did you like cry? Inside, outside, were you like devastated? Because that's hard for a teenager to deal with. You know, no, God been with me. I, I No, I, yeah, I think. And also, because I was already performing. I was on stage, like I said, at nine. We are going around doing these different performances. So I understand that. There comes no's. I was trained. Rejection is a part well, of rejection it. Rejection is a part mm -hmm. of it. And I learned that at an early age. And it didn't take away from who I was because I was great. And it was just something wrong with them. You know, like it was never me. I never looked at myself and was like, you're not good enough or you can't do it or you didn't do well. I did it. <laughs> if I'm going to do it, baby, I'm going to do it. Like, it's done. Stick a fork in it. Like, it wasn't me. It, was, it wasn't me. And, it, and I understand that it'd be different. People have relationships with different people. People looking for different heights. Different things that are out of my, my power. I have no control over those things. But it wasn't me. Because <laughs> I was prepared. You know, I did what I was supposed to do. So I always felt good about myself and with myself but when I did gain my weight and then I realized I was like maybe maybe because I didn't even know it existed mm -hmm. it was really like 
maybe I can be a plus size. Maybe I, do they have mo-? like I, I had to do research. I had to find out that oh, there are models that are bigger than a size two. This you know this, this, this. So I took some pictures, and then I went to the agencies. And this time when I went to the agencies, they were like. <laughs> They said, okay. And then they gave me, but they said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and see this photographer. I want you, we want to take you over to this house. We want to put you in London with these girls and put you. But my mom at the time, this was four. My mom was like, oh no, they trying to do what? They want you to go where with some girls in the house? I don't know about all that. And in my head, I was like, okay. They didn't say no because I had heard no, like no, like no, right? So here it was in the no. It was like, hey, we're going to work with you. We're going to train you. We're going to put you in a house. So I went over to Wilhelmina. And when I went into Wilhelmina, we passed in our books. And then they canceled a whole lot of girls. And I was a part of the girl who got canceled. And one girl came past and she had got picked. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, what did they see in her? But I'm like, let me get some more information. Like, who shot your book? Let me see what's going on. And while I'm looking at her stuff, the head casting director, her name Susan, she seen me. She seen me from the side. I had this wig on. It was like turned to the side like this. I had my hair and a little ponytail. And she came, she came up to me and she was like, Have you been seen yet? And I was like, Yeah, but I'm mad because they seen me and they dismissed me. She was like, Where your book at? And I was like, right here. She's like, have a seat. I have a seat. Everyone left. She came back. She said, I don't know what's going on with your hair. She said, but you need to cut it. She said, I need to, I need you to cut your hair in a short bob, like maybe this length. And then you need to see this list of photographer. I don't know what your pockets are looking like, but if you could start from the first and work your way down. <laughs> and I was excited because she didn't talk about shipping me off nowhere. She told me to cut my hair, which was fine, because baby, I changed my hair like the wind, okay? I went and seen the first photographer on the list, took the photos, sent back in um, my pictures. She calls me and she says, oh my god you're so adorable these pictures are so cute unfortunately at this time we don't have any room on our board and my mom was pissed why they make you cut your hair you had to cut your hair (laughs) i was like that's fine i went back to new york because i used to go to new york every summer went back to new york seen the second person on the list did a photo shoot with that person it sucked i sent it in sent in some flowers called her back hey how you doing she said you know what Come in. So I was signed as a plus size model in New York City before I was even on America's Next Top Model. I was already out here doing my big one, two and three, honey. Thank you. Perseverance. Mm-hmm. No, but that's the thing. And, and listen, I, I do want to hear. So you're about to enter college. And how did you <clears throat> find out that Top Model was looking for girls? Because at this point, you came in season three. Mm-hmm. So... Obviously, you knew the show. It was a ma- a massive hit out the gate. Yes, it was. It was major. So I was in college. I was actually finishing my two years, my associates, and I was about to transfer to Ohio State. Um, and Wilhelmina had just dropped me, okay, because I was still in Dayton. So I was going back to New York. So I wasn't. They wanted me to relocate. Anyway, they had just dropped me, and I met this girl when I was in at school at Sinclair. She was like, oh, I just came back from auditioning from America's Next Time Model because we were talking about modeling. I told her I just got signed, but I didn't tell her I got dropped. I was just, you know, hyping myself up like girl I'm going to New York because I was going to New York anyway because the thing was I had a Wilhelmina book so you couldn't tell me nothing I was going to New York to take it over because if Wilhelmina signed me and I walk into any other agency saying that I'm a a, a whatever I used I was with Wilhelmina Mm -hmm. they gonna sign me I'm I'm popping that's all I needed so I was just hyped I'm moving to New York and um so she was like I just auditioned for America's Next Top Model so she's telling me that she just auditioned for America's Next Top Model. And I'm like, what? Where? And she was like, oh, yeah. You can go to um, Columbus. She's like, they, it's on the website. And this is, like, very foreign. Because this is, like, you know, we didn't have Instagram. And we weren't really, like, doing websites and all that stuff. It was just real. And she was like, you know, she gave me the information, though. And so my boyfriend at the time, he lived in Columbus. He drove me to the audition. I went in, and it was girls everywhere it was a sea of women <laughs> all over the place and we came into the like ballroom the area the whole place was crowded and it had to be a stage no bigger than this like from here to here mm. it wasn't even that much of a stage and it was a cameraman and he had his little camera right there and all the girls we kind of lined up and we came on the stage and we had to say like our name our age and do a little walk and turn or whatever and i'm watching these girls and they had no stage presence no like 
Jenna say qua, you know. So I'm just like, oh, I can't wait till it's my turn because I'm about to turn it out, baby. Like they were acting like they were scared to walk the little, you know, it was only a few steps, baby. I was going, okay, like let me get up there. So show enough, I got up there. I did my little one, two, I twirled. I said my little boom, boom, cat, cat, right? I got off. Everybody was clapping. Everybody was clapping. I was a star. No, Carlos. I was a star. Oh, of course. I was a star. When I walked off that stage, everybody was clapping. Everybody knew that I was going to be on the show. They was like, oh, she picked. I picked. I was so hyped. Okay. I went on a vacation to Jamaica with my hairstylist and some friends. I told everybody in Jamaica that I was going to be like on America's Next Top Model. I was kissing babies. I went. I'm like, I mean, no, in real life, kissing babies, doing interviews, going on stage. You're doing interviews without just, officially we, getting the gig? Because I went to I went to Jamaica and it was like Beanie Man was there, Trina was there, some other people were there. It's like I just always had this kind of thing where people were like she got to be somebody, it's something mm-hmm. about her, you know. So and I'm like, yeah, I'm Takara, I'm about to be on America's Next Top Model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. So I get back, I'm back, I go on the trip, I come back and I'm transitioning because I was going to New York to do the um, to model because I already been a Willamine and everything. And I get to my sister's house, Jamaica. She's like, hey, so what's next? What's the next steps? I said, oh, ain't nobody called me. Mm. I ain't heard nothing. How many weeks has it been at this point? And maybe two, three weeks. Yeah. Maybe two, three weeks have passed. And I ain't heard nothing. I don't know nothing. Okay. So I go online. I'm looking to find out, like, I don't know, because I don't even know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who to call. I don't know who to call. How to find I don't them. Know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. You checking your phone. I, said, I don't know nothing. So they so online it says. If you got to come to find out what I went to, <laughs> back up. Let's come to find out what I went to was like where the local news has set up. And that's why so many girls was there. It's like the local news station was sending in tapes for the show. So it wasn't like actually oh, the show itself. So the local news, news station, station was submitting, submitting tapes for the, to, for the city or for the region, whatever. So wow. they were just so, you know, so I said, oh, no, I need to meet somebody who make decisions. Yes. I need the person who gonna make who can make a choice, who got some say so, some pull around here. So they had the callbacks and the callbacks were in New York, Indianapolis, and some other places. And I was like, oh no, New York, that's too much. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be too it's gonna be pandemonium, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do New York. It's like I'm gonna fly to Indianapolis. So I booked me a flight. I flew my ass to Indianapolis to go to the callback. I get to the callback and they're like, Hey, you're not on our list. And we're only here to see these group of people and we got X amount of time to see all these people at the end if there's time then we'll bring you in like 30 at a time you know but you have to fill out this packet you have to submit these pictures you have so it was perfect because they had to do all this interview so while they were doing that I went to like a Kinko's a little FedEx I'm over there printing in a city that you've never been to well I've been to Indianapolis a few times you know Indianapolis ain't far from the Midwest okay Okay, we so oh. <laughs> okay, but um, yes, you so, gotta live. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got emancipated when I was like 14 years old, so I've been on my own for a long time. Wait, 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 not enough is about wait, what? Yeah, yeah, we'll come back to that too. So, anyway, so I fill out all this paperwork, I fill out all the paperwork, I wait, they bring us in like 30 at a time, they bring us in the room, we line up, and so when we when we come in, because you know, I'm trying to be first, I'm trying to be seen, I'm like first, but I noticed they want us to walk all the way around the room, so I would have ended up over there at the end of the line. So, I stopped dead center in front of the camera. Everybody else walking in, y'all can walk past or whatever, but this is, I got my spot, right? My spot's right here. So we come on in. I'm looking dead at the camera. She come, um, Michelle Mock is her name. That's the lady who changed my life. Shout out to Michelle Mock. Michelle Mock was the casting director. She came in. She's like, say your name, your age, this, where you from, three reasons why, you know. So everybody, they're coming in and they're saying, hi, I'm Mary. Hey, I'm Susan. Hello, I'm Nicole. Hi, I'm Teresa. So I was like, okay, don't say hi. Don't say hello. Okay? <laughs> and, you know, I was just in college and I was like, I took a, a public speaking class. It's like, if you want to catch people's attention, you either speak really low so they have to like lean in and hear what you're saying. And I was like, that's not me, right? Or you got to make a big splash, right? So we all standing in the line. I step out of the line. I step my feet. I step out forward and I say, I am 
to Cara Jones, and I'm from Dayton, Ohio, and I'm weighing in at a whopping 180 <laughs> pounds, and I'm big, black, beautiful, and loving it. And Michelle Mark was looking at that camera the whole time. That baby looked up. She said, <laughs> Thank you. I said. <laughs> she went back down. She looked back at the camera. <laughs> Baby, when that thing was over, Michelle said, you, you, your cell phone paid. Uh, this is your right number. You make sure all the numbers are correct. Is this your address? Can we can contact you right here? So you know I knew. We you Everybody knew, knew that it was history since then. I said, I told y'all. What, what I've been hearing, I'm a, I want you to finish. You really manifested this life that you live. Because what I'm hearing is before you even got the gig, you spoke into existence. You claimed it. And what people don't know about manifesting is not only do you have to speak it, you have to believe it. With everything. You can say it all day long, but you have to believe it. And successful people, we have this weird sense of, 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 of confidence Knowing. to where people are like, how you know? Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I'm a, I'm a, I know. I'm a, I'm a, I know. So you... And you, it's like that. And they also say that you can see the vision. You have to understand that other people may not see your yeah. vision. Other people may not see where you're going. They might not understand it. It might not be as clear to them. And you got to forgive them, too, for not believing or not doubt, you know, or doubting because they can't see. They yeah. can't see it, you know? But yeah. Everything starts with the mind. Mm, everything starts with the mind. It really does. Exactly. It really does. So when did you get the official call that you made it? Okay, so after I left Michelle Mock, um, they, um, they, you know what? They were so slick with it, kind of. So they called and they said, hey, um, we need you to do a, a, a camera. We're going to send you a camera, um, like a little personal camera, and we need you to, you know, do a, a self little... self-tape? Like a self-tape or something. But it actually was on the show. If you go back to season one, they were all setting this up because yeah. you... Because we were actually on the show, but we weren't on the show, if you realize, because we had to get cut. We got cut on my season. We got cut on the show for the people who actually made it, like, yeah. to the house. So even... So we really didn't know that... I really didn't know that I was really on the show even when they flew me out to LA you know what I'm saying because it was still part of the auditioning process because yeah. you see on the first episode yeah, we're still all, like all the girls are coming into the to room play, yeah, they come into the room to <laughs> yeah, audition yeah. so for me I still didn't realize I mean I made the cut to go to LA so that was exciting like oh okay next cup I know I was going to make it all the way through I think I was a little too cocky for them I was like they ain't sending the plus size girl home <laughs> I was like the plus size girl. Like, they, they ain't sending me home I knew I, knew I wasn't going home <laughs> Not the first round anyway, or the second and third round. I know. I know it's gonna be there for a little while. <laughs> Shit. So wait, when you walked in and you you repeated the same thing you did in your call yeah, back. They asked me to. All oh, right, exactly for the audition. Yeah, right. Exactly. I, I remember the episode. You yes. walked in. You said the exact same, same thing, thing with your black outfit. You had the yeah. That was cute. <laughs> Too. She was. Cute. You got the holes here and the holes there. Yes, a little did. romper here. Yeah, yeah. Hello, you know, love that. You know, this is what I do. Yes. So <laughs> you walk in and you see the, I mean, the motherfucking mother icon, legendary Tyra Banks. Let me tell you something. So I, well, the first time I seen Tyra Banks. It was unreal. She was so she came out to actually the dinner before we did the audition the night before we had a dinner. And they showed that on camera too. Yeah. But she looked like a hologram. When I tell you she was just like unreal, realistic beauty. It was just like she was just beautiful. I was starstruck. I was, you know what I'm saying, girl fanning out. I was just like, wow, I wanted to <laughs> touch her. Like, is she real? She's so tall and so pretty and just, just beat down. And she had like this little flowy dress. Tyra was just unreal, beautiful. Mm. It was really like beautiful. Yeah, it was beautiful. And you just, and you, and you killed it. And you, and you were able to be on the show. And on this season, you're with Eva the Diva. Eva the Diva. And Yaya and the Yaya. Costa. Yes, I love Yaya um, the Costa. What was it? What okay, what was it like? Cause again, you are a black girl from Dayton mm. and you're in the house on television. You're on a reality show, and you're competing with these girls to be a top model. 
Was it? They were competing with me in my eyes. Uh-uh. They were competing. I wasn't competing with them. Because also, when you're thinking, I grew up wanting to model, right? Going to agencies, being around these model girls. These little girls that's a size two and who are models and stuff are the most ins- insecure girls. They are so insecure. They, I mean, they showed it on the show too. They're looking at themselves. Oh, I'm too fat here. Oh, I need to lose five pounds. Oh, you know, all these little petty ass shit. like, you know, I, I didn't have those kind of problems. I don't got them kind of issues. Mm-mm. That I, I, it wasn't. Um, that's why I, that, that's why I felt like I knew I was going to be around for a little while because I didn't have those type of insecurities that they were already displaying early on in the show. Like you, you got to right, got to be in your mind yeah. first. And they, they lost mentally a few, you know, a few girls in the beginning because they weren't, they didn't have that confidence. They were already insecure. They were, cause they had competition. I didn't have competition. There was another plus size girl for me to compare myself right. to. So. What was so interesting is when you look back on the show and I'm sure you saw this moment, Janice Dickerson was really hard on you. She she switched up. She was hard on me, then she loved me, then she hated me. Yeah. Because she said, you could be the first plus-size girl to win this show. And she gave me praises and everything. But then Tyra checked her ass, thank you, Tyra, and was like, just pick a side. Because don't say she can do something one minute and then say she can't do something right. the next minute. Like, what are we doing? And that never bothered you. I mean, th- th- there was a moment where you did break down and, and, and get emotional on the show. So th- did, it, did the pressures just like... Was it that missing family, miss homesick, or you know that's that's that is one of the, one of those moments I would like to say um, was TV the TV magic moment. I did break down and cry, but it wasn't that they were getting to me. I think I it was about me, and I was I was getting on me. I wasn't getting on me. I was just saying like I was basically giving myself a pep, pep talk like. Don't let these people beat you down. Don't let them make you think that you're not what you are. You know what I'm saying? Of course you gain some weight. Of course you're bigger than the other girls. Of course you this. But I'm not going to let y'all make me feel bad about that. Because that's when that bitch pinched me. The wardrobe stylist. Mm -hmm, I remember. Mm -hmm. Do you think that was intentional? Yeah. To throw you off your game? I don't know what it was for. Because they had, they didn't, first of all, be. First of all, plus size in fashion is totally different than what we see plus size is in everyday life. Like right mm-hmm. now, I'm a size 10. I'm plus size. I'm perfect size for European plus size modeling right now, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so being a size 10, size 12 is just the average American, especially black woman with curves. So I get dressed every single day. That's why I get dressed. What you mean you can't find clothes for me? I got a whole closet full of clothes. What you mean you can't dress me? And then you're going to pinch me with these big industrial things? No. No. I don't think it was accident. It was too, no. And she didn't have no remorse. She didn't, it wasn't no, um, you know, it was no remorse. Uh, get, bitch, get over <laughs> it. Like, okay. But, um, no, I think I was just, I was just, I was just realizing that People are trying to tear me down, and I ain't gonna let it work. I mean, my feelings were hurt, but not from not from them. It was just for me, just pep talking myself. Like, mm-hmm. don't let them make you feel ashamed. Don't let them make you feel bad. Don't let them make you feel nothing. Like, you got this. And I broke down, and Yaya was there to console me. She's a sweetheart. And Eva was there too. Eva was always there consoling me too. From day one, Eva and Yaya have been consistent, consistent friends. Yeah. And what's interesting about that too, <clears throat> obviously. You three or one, I think there's maybe one more, just the black girls out yeah. of the cast. But, but you guys got along. Um. Well, we, yeah, we got along. Yeah, we did get along. It was, well, no, no. I, what I was about to say was I think we just all were individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we just respected each other as individuals. It wasn't because I don't think we were trying to get along because it was a competition. I don't, you know, like Eva had her little love affair with um, Ann. <laughs> That uh-huh. was cute. And I and Yaya, she was neutral. Like she just she wasn't, she was very neutral. And I'm, I'm just a friendly but you know, person and I'm in my own right, you know, I'm standing and representing representing something for, you know, my girls out there. And we were just all individuals and I think we just respected that about each other. And we did get along because it was no, yeah, we reflections. 
Mm-hmm. We recognized each other's strength and beauty and who we were. You know, we didn't need to like try to use one another, or try to get camera time by. Because you know, people do that. They'll be like, "Let me go stand over here to try to get some camera time with her," or the camera's always over here. Like people be strategizing and stuff and trying to figure things out. Oh, you know how it be. Oh, no, that's true. Mm-hmm. We call it the real life special. Oh, okay. That's what's called. When the real life on the camera, uh-huh. this other person comes out. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. Real. You know, and it's then when, the, when that real light is off, they get back. Like, okay, girl. And it's, it's a thing. It is a thing. It's it a, is thing. a thing. What has been happening lately due to social media and people re-watching Top Model... Mm. I'm sure you've seen this. There's been tons of controversy mm. about Top Model. Mm. And people are saying the meanness that occurred in terms of the challenges mm. um, they had you girls do. Um, a lot of them feel like it was demeaning. It was disrespectful. Um, a lot of people have blamed Tyra for a, a large part of this. What are your thoughts when it comes to that? Do you agree with that? Or do you feel like Tyra represented exactly what was going on in the modeling industry at that time? That's exactly what was going on. Tyra was doing exactly what was going on at the industry at that time. Like, modeling industry is cutthroat. That's what they were doing. And girls, and and not only that, what they were doing, that is what girls were doing, trying to break into the industry. Girls were doing whatever they could to break. They want to cut their hair. They want to close their gaps. Or they want to, you know whatever they decide to do, like people were doing extreme things to try to be in the business because that was their dream. I want to be a model. And so like I went to the agency and they told me to cut my hair and I cut my hair and they told me, I don't know how much money you got, but pay for this photographer. So I did what they asked me to do because this is what I wanted to do. And so this is what we signed up for. We went on America's Next Top Model to say, hey, baby, do whatever, what do it takes for me to be on top? Um, and I, and I think that's, I don't blame Tyra or think that they were being, you know, doing things that weren't, that weren't normal in for the modeling industry. I think that's, that's, that was, that's how it is. It's cutthroat. It's cold blooded. People are starving themselves trying to fit into a size two that, you know, having eating disorders and it's a real thing out there. So many girls are doing so many things to try to fit in. So I can't say that we're blaming Tyra for that. It's the industry that we choose. You mm-hmm. choose something else. Mm-hmm. Do something else. Say no. Do you feel bad that she gets a lot of flack based on I- instead of giving people like you who have amassed so much success, Eva is still relevant. Yaya's acting on broadcast networks, and a lot of models from that world did make it. Do you feel like it's sad that her intention worked by these girls having opportunities? But there's people out there who want to focus on, like, the challenges. Well, that's what people do. People always gravitate to the negative. It, you know, positivity don't sell. Positivity is not popular. People want the drama. They want the messy. They want the clickbait. They want all that. They want something to talk about. They want the gossip. So, I mean, I don't feel bad for Tyra because this is the business that we in. And I think she got tough skin. That thing, I think it rolls right down her drip, right on off. She's living her life with her baby and her in her business, and she's doing her, you know, manifesting her wonderful life. That's how I like to think about it. So, you know, <laughs> like, you know, because you can't, because we signed up, you know, and then we could say no. And like I said, so many people do things trying to pursue their dreams in all different um, industries, not just the modeling industry. So don't, we can't blame. What you think? No, listen, I am a humongous fan of Top Model. Mm-hmm. And listen, obviously... I wasn't there, which is why I wanted to ask you those questions. But from the outside looking mm-hmm. in, I thought, even as as a young man watching it, she's representing what's happening in the modeling industry. Mm-hmm. We all work in industries to where, especially in this in, in that day and age, but it was cutthroat, and mm-hmm. you had to be the best. And listen, it's what you said earlier. Some girls do cut their hair. Some girls do close their gab. You you go. But that's also what happens in 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 in, in acting and, mm-hmm. and singing. Like girls dye their hair, they're in a girl group. Just mm-hmm. to stand out amongst the other girls you're on stage with. All these things happen. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. What I'm saying is that was the reality at the time. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anybody should be, you know, nailed to the cross for representing what was happening at the time. And I think instead of focusing on that, focus on the fact that she has given so many women and women of color mm-hmm. and women who weren't conventionally pretty by society standards mm-hmm. 
to be seen. Yes. And I'm sorry, she taught me how to smile. So okay. when, I, when I do my light skin boy squint on my on my ground, say light skin. You know what I'm saying? Squint. You know the light skin boy squint is like. That's you know what I'm No. Okay. So smile. I, I want you to. No. Okay. Wait. Right. Smile. <laughs> Okay, so Tyra Coy <laughs> smiles and smile with your eyes. Okay. So teach me how to do it. No, that's Tyra's signature thing. I know, but, but don't you know how to do you it? You just did it with your life. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is me smiling. You're going to do it too, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do it at this camera. Where are we doing it at? Okay. Okay, ready? Ready? One, two, three. Is that it? I don't know. We can right. find out. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you mine. Okay, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Wait. Is that <laughs> no. Wait. What? What, Carlos? I was, okay. Okay. I was taught. Okay. She said, you, you inhale. Okay. <laughs> I can look at you. I'm gonna look at Red and you look at me. Okay. So she said you do this. Okay, I like from the angle, from this angle, look good. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's about angles. It's, it's all about angles. angles. No. And light. It's all See, about I was the I was in light. my 20s watching yes. Tyra like Yes. Teach me how to, <laughs> so to this day, Tyra, thank you. Mm. For coining smiles, yes. me and all the boys who do the squint, <laughs> we love it, and yes. we we go we go link to that. Have you spoken to, spoken to her recently? No, the last time I spoke to Tyra, I love Tyra too. Tyra used to call out to me all the time when she did her talk show. She called me on; I was a guest there. She did her um, Tyra Land. I was working with her. She was doing some merch. Um, too, um, right before COVID hit, and she called me, and we did a photo shoot. I got some pictures behind the scenes, but I'm not going to release them. But um, but no, I haven't heard. Her, I haven't heard from her since COVID. Since okay. COVID, yeah. And you still keep in touch with Eva? Yes, I just talked to Eva. She, I was at the radio doing um, guest um, co-hosting down at V103. So Eva came down um, promoting her All all the Queen's Men. Uh, that, that show. show is amazing, Love right? That show. I was just in L.A. with Yaya. We went there to um, celebrate with Pam Greer. She has a show coming on Prime TV. So it was out there with Yaya. And we linked up. And you know we are having a conversation because me, Eva, and Yaya are like a girls group unofficially. Mm -hmm. You know? And I'm like... Like, we have to get together and definitely do something. Like, we've been in this game for 20 years, and we're unofficial, we're an unofficial group. We <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you were sent home, mm -hmm. did you think, that's the end of my modeling career? Did you? No, because it wasn't the start of my modeling career. Amen. I always, when I came in on America's Next Top Model, my first interview, our first promo shoot and everything, I told everybody, I said, y'all just let me get my foot in the door. I mean, I come here to win, but let me get my foot in the door and I'm going to show you how to freak this baby right here, okay? Because you just need a chance. And I always believe and I always raised my little sister too. I tell her, you take one step, God going to take two. You know, I've always had faith. You put in the work. When people see you're working and people see you're trying, people want to help. They want to help people who want to help themselves. So, you know, I just... I just always believed in myself. And because I believed in myself, people around me believed in me too. And, you know, when I got off America's Next Top Model, I had calls and people. And it was still surreal. Like, I, it was really surreal because I was getting calls from, like, Ashley Stewart. We want to send a car. We want to come through. We want to take you to dinner. Let's talk about it. And I didn't, like, have an agent or nothing at this time. So I really didn't even know how to um, navigate through these things. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, like, my boyfriend at the time, I ended up dating him. And so, like, I was just in this. I was in it. <laughs> I'm in it. <laughs> you are. <laughs> no. I'm in it. <laughs> I'm in the life, baby. I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it started as soon as I got, I was working. Um, I moved to New York. I told you before I got on America's Next Time Model because I was coming to be this plus size supermodel of the world. I was work working at Mo Bay's as a host on um, 125th and 5th Street, like this Caribbean. Are you not? Ah! Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. So I was working there. So after the show aired and everything, people used to come up to my job. I was like a um uh uh attraction. People like, let's go up to Mo Bay's to Carve from America's Next Top Model work up there. So I had to quit my job 
instantly. And I've been working in the industry ever since, you know, but um, but just to answer your question, after America's Next Top Model, no, then I start working for BET. I yes. got a, I was the correspondent there for four years yes. with a, a, you know, options, and I ended up working there for five years. You know, they they relocated me to LA, and then I hosted my own talk show, a late night talk show. Like I'm be, I'm ahead of the curve. Like I was doing things before. Things I, I feel like I was a test dummy for some stuff, you know, because we were here before we had social media. I was, you know, hosting a late night talk show as a black woman. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, amazing. Yeah. No, you were doing a lot. And, and around the time we met, and you were, like, the hottest thing. Stay hottest out. thing. You okay? Mm-hmm. You know? And the men were after you. And they still are. Ah! Why would they stop? Well, you know, <laughs> we'll get to the DMs later. But, like, was it overwhelming in terms of, like, a lot of celebrity men were after you? And <laughs> just men in general, but, like, was it overwhelming for you? No, no, it wasn't overwhelming. You know, I did a dating show, Donald I know, Trump, the, right? The Ultimate Merger. <laughs> the Ultimate yeah. Merger, all the guys. But no, not even with the celebrity guys. I mean, we were in New York. New York was a time. So it was just fun. Everybody was everywhere. We were all young. I was just saying that to my friend the other day. I was like, I don't realize now that I'm in my 40s. I um, was like, these athletes and players, they're like 20. They're young. Like, we were young, you know? Like, when they were the it boys and we were the it girls, we were all, like, in our 20s, you know, playing around, having a good time. We were all in New York. (laughs) Because you had a football player boyfriend. I did. Was that fun? It was (laughs) fun. You know, in the words of Drake, we're like really big things. And a football player... You know. Yeah, that was really big. <laughs> and chocolate. And chocolate. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. everything. How long did y'all date? <laughs> Not I'm loving I'm it. Loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, chicken nuggets. But how was that relationship? It was um it was a really good relationship. I loved him so much. I loved him so much and I loved his mom so much. Um and uh, that's all I'm gonna say about him. What happened? Why did y'all break up? Um, it, because of me. Oh. What you do? I fucked up. Did you fuck another man? No, I just, <laughs> I just fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up bad. Sometimes I, um, like, sometimes I feel like maybe that was the one who got away, but um, <clears throat> I also feel like. If he can't forgive me or if he didn't forgive me, obviously he didn't. But then what did you do that was so I, unforgivable? I, I, I fucked up. I fucked up. And um I just feel like if he um if he couldn't forgive me, you know, then it just wasn't meant to be. Well, you know, this is a thing. Mm-hmm. This is a thing. You know this now. I'll just say it out loud. Okay. Men, it's hard for a man to forgive a woman. Mm-hmm. He could do whatever you did, he could have done the same thing to you. You would have found forgiveness. I've been told by a lot, and, and all the heterosexual men in the room are nodding their heads right now. It's it's very hard for a man to forgive yeah, a woman. And I feel like he stu- he's he stood on his principles and not his heart. And it's okay. Cause he's there's still love there. Has he re- has he married? Yeah, he's married. He has okay. married and has children and he's happy. Okay. Yeah. But when you look back in your life, you would say he's the one that got away. Yeah. 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 I'm going to let him have that. It's true. Okay. Well, that's honest. That's honest. And then you dated this high power music executive. <laughs> I'm so mad, like, you know, my whole little life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then after that, I dated this high power executive. Let me music tell you about executive. this relationship because this is about the time. <laughs> I that was, was wonderful. Let me tell you. Baby, everything. <laughs> no, let me tell you. Yeah, okay, you tell me. I was tell, you going to say it too. Okay. I'm gonna let you, you don't know it. this. Okay. Me, because again, me and Takara at this time are, are friends. We're close. And we have like this small circle. And if you did not live in New York between the years of 2002 through like 2012, you missed out on, on a decade of... Listen, my opinion, and you tell me if I'm wrong. 2002 through 2012 
was the best decade in the world in New York City. You had to be New York City. Yes. I, I'm talking about us going to Kanye West's birthday party at the Louis Vuitton store mm. on Fifth Avenue. Right. I had to sneak in. She was invited. <laughs> Love you so much. I wasn't Carlos sure. King back. I, I mean, I was Carlos yeah, King, honey, but you know, let's Carlos be clear. King, yeah. But I, you know, <laughs> they didn't know I was Carlos King, so I <laughs> they didn't know. Yeah. Honey, they look. I was new. Mm. I was like, what the hell? We on the guest list. Meanwhile, I'm like this. The car. Yeah. <laughs> Get it me in. The car, yeah. like, it's with me. It moves like this. <laughs> yes. Remember that? They They Come on! Come out! And they'll be like, and, and the, they'll be like this. <laughs> what? 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 You're right! You're right! You're right! And then I would go in. Yes. yes. It, it, was, it was the good yes, days. Yes, it was the good days. Okay. okay. So, my girl, so my Kaiser, I mean, <laughs> Jay Z. <coughs> I mean, Atlantic Records, high powered executive, and. This was a new relationship. Yeah, it was a new relationship. And he courted the fuck he out of you. He courted the fuck out of me. He <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Tell the girls what he did, baby. I mean, this is before social media where the guys slide in DMs or the guys, you know, fly you out. You know, this is before all of that was even known. So that's what I'm saying to you. Back then, me and the crew would be like, bitch, he... Yeah, he's no, doing he, what? He, Courtside at the at the Knicks yeah. game, bitch. Yeah. Next to Jay Z and Beyonce, bitch. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you tell you said it ain't nothing go left ahead, for bitch. me to say. <laughs> it ain't nothing left for me to say. But it it was amazing. Yeah, like he came in and because of who he is and his relationships and his job position and stuff. Um, he but he was very romantic. He is very romantic. Is very sweetheart. Is very much into me and um. We, I mean, he just took me everywhere with him. We were so much in love, but we did things like things that you don't know about. Like we went on park dates at the park. We would go skating. We would go hiking. We started bowling, but it turned into like this big bowling event. Everybody would come to <laughs> once a month. But yeah, no, we um, we were just in love and happy and enjoying what life had to offer at that time. It was fun. It was fun. It was so much fun. I let you do all the bragging, but it no, was a, it was a, it was a time, it was a time, baby. <laughs> no, bitch, and me and the girls were like, it was a time, baby. reaping the benefits. So, you were a rock aware model. Yes, 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 yeah, I was a rock aware model. Yeah, I love you so much. And then Jay asked me himself, I cannot believe it. I was at BT, and um, Jay Z, he came there. We're doing an interview. I'm going into his, his um. What you call this? The room, the <laughs> what his office? <laughs> no, not the office, the green room. You know, before oh, the green. The oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, we're yeah. at BT, and I come in. I'm just like you know prepping, introducing myself, whatever. And it was just amazing because he was he knew who I was. You know, it was like, and it was so fantastic because everyone I met knew me, so it like blew me away. Like the first time I met Beyonce, she was like, "Oh my God, it's a car!" And I said, "No." <laughs> You can't say, oh my God, Beyonce. Like, how she beat me to the punch? How you gonna say, oh my God, Takara, oh my God, Beyonce, 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 <laughs> stop, no, you didn't. Like, she's so sweet, I can't believe it. I love so Beyonce. Sweet. And, you know, we used to hang out. One time she checked somebody for me because we were some, we were at the 4040 Club. Some guy was trying to talk to me and she was like, didn't, don't you see she's here with somebody? <laughs> okay, Beyonce was that she didn't play about Kaiser, she didn't play about me, she was like, she a Virgo. She was like, <laughs> get, get gone. You see, don't you see? Rude. I was like, Ooh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I love you, the gangster Beyonce. Say gangster Beyonce. Baby. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. Though. No, you got so everywhere. you're okay. So you met Jay Z in the green room and he, oh, he, oh, yeah, he knew so who he you asked, were. Yeah, he knew who I was and he asked me to be a part of his um campaign. And I was like, sure. You know, I'm just laughing and giggling like I am, losing track of my thoughts and I'm about to walk out. And he's like, hold on. How are we going to get in contact with you? How, you know, we, I was like, you know, this ain't no fluff, fluff talk. Yeah. This is real talk, you know? And I gave him my contact, and they contacted me, and they reached out to me, and I did his Rock Aware and We Will Not Lose campaign, which was perfect. It was such an awesome campaign. Yeah. That was beautiful. What was it like? Because you would go out on double dates with Jay-Z and Beyonce. No comment. I you mean! Know, like, I get, I'm, not go, I'm not doing all this stuff. No, I'm just saying! 
You, I mean, I listen. Let's be clear. I already know the story, so I know you know. I, I know, it ain't for me, know, right. and, and we and we ain't gonna say much. Okay, but I want the world to know this: you weren't just like this jump off. Like oh, no. I want people to know this too. And I'm gonna get back to my original question. But why you, would you even say that? You were no. I'm gonna oh tell you God. why. Okay. Because again, nowadays people be like, "Oh, this beautiful girls with this high powered executive for whatever reason." I want the world to know you were so in love with no, we him. We were in love. Like, people used to no. be sick of us. Everybody, everywhere we went, his co-workers, his friends, his family, like, we were always making out. We are always holding hands. Like, we were always together. We damn near lived together. I mean, we did live together. I remember one day I got mad, and I'm like, I'm going home. I'm taking my shit. I got the pack in. I realized... Oh, I live here. <laughs> my mama was at the house. I'm telling my mama, get up, mama, come on, let's go. My mama like, I ain't going to, you go. I was like, mom, I'm like, you supposed to stand with me in this moment. That lady was like, no, nah, you go. Because like I said, I got emancipated when I was 14. So I've been on my own. I've always had my own apartment. I've always paid my own bills. I've always taken care of myself. Like, shout out to me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and not knocking anybody, you know, who roommates and, you know, do things. But I'm just saying I've been very independent all my life. Been paying bills in my name all my life. So even when I got with him, I didn't give up my apartment. I didn't give up my place. And so I felt like I'm going to go home because I always just always had my own and I never wanted to give up my stuff. So it really was an eye opener for me how much. I had let down my guard and how how we were really, you know, in a real relationship because I was living with this man. We would drive to work every day. He would go to the office. I would go to the office. He would pick me up. We would go to dinners. And not only were we with celebrities, but we were with the boss. You know, like I met meetings with the boss talking about the talent as if I'm not talent. Yeah. You know, like I was previewed to a lot of things and I've been able to give my opinion to a lot of things for these girls. <laughs> in these industries so yeah so how were the double dates with the carters shut up i said i'm not answering that but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice life 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 this I'll, listen because <laughs> we're just listen nice. you and i are just two kids from from the midwest <laughs> i you don't, you don't have to admit to this this is me if i were ever on a double date with the carters i would constantly pinch myself and be like bitch can you believe this is your life like, I, like I, it, it would never be normal to me, I don't think. I'm not going to make a comment once again for the third time. I'm okay. not going to make no comment, Carlos. But I will say for my 25th birthday, dude, though, um, Kaiser did invite Jay-Z and Beyonce to come out. And then they did make an appearance at my 25th birthday party. So I was definitely pinching myself to know that I had Beyonce and Jay-Z at my 25th birthday. That was huge. It was like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like a big, that was a big moment for me, especially because I was able to have friends from Dayton there and friends from New York. It was like, were you at the party? You no, uh, I wasn't. Because was you real quiet because everybody was there, like BT, every Roxy. Wait, Terrence. what was I there? Yeah, you had to be. You I had to, to be me. there. It was everybody. You know what's so funny? I, I, You know what? I'm laughing. I was there. And the reason why. You had to be there. No, I was there. I, was I just there. remember because the story is when I met Beyonce for the first time, I embarrassed myself. Because, <clears throat> you know, I was young. Okay. And remember when Def Jam would have the Christmas parties? Mm hmm. So Beyonce Kelly and her cousin Angie are at this party. And I'm, a, I'm like, this is before my BET days. I'm an intern at Def Jam. And the day of the Christmas party, my boss said, you can be my plus one. Okay. And I said, I get to go to the Def Jam. The Def Jam Christmas party was the hottest ticket in town. Hottest ticket, town. period. So long story short, I go, Mariah Carey is there. Mm. It's, it's the whole thing. And I'm a huge, huge Destiny Child fan. So, Takara, Beyonce leaves with Kelly and her cousin, and I happen to leave at the same time. Okay. It just so happened. Just so happened. It just so happened. I wasn't, happened. like, following and no, stalking like them that. up. Uh -uh. It, it was, it was, it was, like it was you know, yeah, it, was, it was coincidence. kismet. And I run up to her. <laughs> <laughs> I ran up on Beyonce. Right. And grabbed her. I did. Okay. And <laughs> the look, Beyonce, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I apologize in person when I see you again. Yeah. 
I will. And thanks for watching Reality of the King. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the look on her face. So it's Beyonce, Kelly, and Angie. Uh-huh. And I go, oh my God, Beyonce! And she did this. Right. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God! And she she froze. Uh-uh. And said, thank you, baby. And I said, Ooh, oh. Let me let you go. Right. Shit. <laughs> Oh, Beyonce's so at your party, heart, no, she's so sweet. Yeah. So at your party, I blocked it out because I was like, "Bitch, whatever you do, <laughs> don't run up, don't on her. go in that direction. <laughs> you focus on Takara, right and here. you hit for your sister." <laughs> yeah. So that, so that, that's what it was. How long were you two in a relationship? Oh, about six years. Yeah. Weren't what, you, what, 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 what? Weren't you engaged? Engaged to who? Mike. Listen here. <laughs> uh, and it was, what was the next relationship? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, mm, no, no is the is the mm-hmm. is the short answer. No, no, me and Mike is never we have never been engaged. I've never been engaged. Okay. Yeah. Why did things end? Um. Ooh. This is this is on the internet. <laughs> 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 this is on the internet. Let me see what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what I want to say. Um. I took the job opportunity in LA and then we just remained friends. Long distance just wasn't. Long distance. Yeah, long distance. I like that. Long distance. Yeah, the distance. Were you devastated? No. Was he devastated? Um I I I would think so, but I don't, you know, but guys don't never really, you know, they try to pop what guys do? Look at me stand up. Um, from what I know, and I'm not saying this to be true for all men, but guys usually try to get over a girl by getting another girl. You know, they just kind of move forward and they don't really dwell in the past. You know, you know, they might, they don't, they just move forward. They move forward and all the things that they learn from your relationship, they carry on to the next relationship and hopefully they just a better person for the new person that they're with, you know. Did you feel like you fucked up that relationship too? Like, would no, you- no. Me and Kaiser are actually really good friends, and we're still on really good terms. Okay. And no, no, we're good. We're, we're good. still good because the type of love that we had, or you know, we have, it was real. Like we were really in love. We really spent a lot of time together. Like we really were intertwined, you know, like we were a power couple, you know, mm-hmm. and um, I'm a big communicator. I'm big on letting people be who they are. Um, and me and Kaiser, like I said, we're in a good place. We're in a good place. You know, like there's no like I don't want to bring his name up or I don't have I'm not going to throw any dirt on his name and I'm not going to act like you know, he it, it puts a bad taste in my mouth because it don't. It was a wonderful time in my life. Like, I got swept off my feet. I did things that people could only imagine. We stayed at the best places. We ate the best. We drank the best. Like, a life of, like, luck, like fairy tale. Like, I could, could write a book about it. So I love him. I'm going to always love him. And there's, I have nothing bad to say about him. And we're still on good terms. Call yeah. right now. We're good. <clears throat> no, and I, and I will say this. <clears throat> what I will share is the fact that I was with you when you would cry. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. I want people to know, like, you were really invested mm-hmm. in love. Mm-hmm. And, like, any relationship, you have your ups and downs. Mm-hmm. But I want I wanted the world to know, like, this was, like, some gold digger situation. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember you crying to me. And I'm like... What is wrong? And you say, Carla! And I'm like, and you know, you you you've always been like this, 
this big personality, just all this fun. But we've had moments where you you were you were emotional. Yeah, and, I was emotional. That's yeah. so funny. You just remind me one time I was in a bar crying about his ass to Kevin Hart, and Kevin was looking at me like, <laughs> really, <laughs> Takara? Not here at the bar. I was like bawling and stuff. Yeah, but no, it was real. Like no, and it could never have been a gold digger thing because I didn't know who he was. You yeah. know, it was like it was. Really real. It was a real thing. Yeah. It is a real thing. Yeah. And then you met Donald Trump. And then I met Donald Trump. <laughs> and it was all cool until he ran for president. I was like, oh, my God. I was so excited. I was like, oh, this is great. I got a show. He's executive produced by Donald Trump. Because, you know, we were all really fans of Donald Trump before he ran for president. We was like, he was cool. You know, then it hit. And it was like, ah, uh, I don't know how this is. And he... He sought you out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they came towards me. And people were hating on me, too. A little hate in the industry, talking about me, talking about why I shouldn't get the position and stuff. But, um, like other women in entertainment who wanted that position? Yeah. I love you so much. <laughs> yes, yes. It was another person. And allegedly, uh, they were, like, you know, just saying I was fat and ghetto and... And unattractive. Another black woman. Another black woman said this to the point where he had, I mean, we had, they had reached out to me, but he had to make it a point to come down and like check me out before we actually like signed the contract to make sure I guess I wasn't ugly or unattractive and fat. And yeah. Yeah. Is she a reality star? I ain't going to talk too much about her. We made up. Okay. Yeah, we made up. I mean, because it's not true. Look at me. No, I mean, you're gorgeous. I, mean, yeah, I know. I'm gorgeous. And I might be a little ghetto, and that's okay. Well, from did, the she ghetto. Have, did she ever get a gig from him? Yeah, actually. In the White House? I'm going to stop talking. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop talking. But no, actually, me and um, Amarosa are really good friends. She's from Ohio, too. Because you were talking about the White House, so I know you was going to <laughs> She good. She actually gave me. I got the seat to Middletown, messing with her. She was sweetheart. Yeah, no, yeah. she's good. I love yeah. Amarosa. Yeah, I love Amarosa too. That's my sis. So you have this guy who won, and y'all dated for a brief second, but it wasn't anything serious. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't anything serious. I'm gonna stop. Let's just keep this earring off. Y'all can't see it anyway. Get your Janet huh? Jackson on, baby. Just one earring. <laughs> right, get <Okay>. my little. <laughs> Let's just do that. No, I remember that. I was so proud of you. It was on TV One, mm-hmm. and that you were meant to do that. And, and they select me for that too. And that's the I've been so blessed. I just been the calls just kept coming in, you know, because we were only good as your last gigs. So I was just so thankful that I was sought after. That was it, it felt good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then Drake sought you out. Um, can I tell you something I never told you? So I have a top five. <laughs> we never had this conversation, which is so funny. Because when we're around each other, we talk about this stuff. Um, so you know how like you have a top five like favorite rappers and all that stuff? So Drake is one of my favorite rappers. He's my goddaughter's favorite rapper, too. She's like 23. She's like, that's my husband. That's my boyfriend, God, mommy. I know you dated him, but he my husband now. I said, go ahead, baby. But no, all jokes aside, what was it like dating Drake? <laughs> you know, it was... I've never been jealous of you <laughs> until I found out you dated Drake. Because I think... You know who Drake reminds me of? And I, and I want to get your opinion. Uh-huh. You know the movie Boomerang? Uh-huh. You know the character played by Eddie Murphy called Marcus? Uh-huh. And you know how... So Drake reminds me of the character Marcus. Yes. Like, I can see that. Very charming yes. and just sensual <laughs> and knows how to please a woman. And Are you going there? I feel like... <laughs> no, listen. When I look at Drake, mm. I... He reminds me of Marcus, just somebody who who knows how to please a woman. I feel like he loves the art of woman. 
I mean, I think I think his whole persona show. Isn't that man? Isn't he lover boy? Isn't he the lover boy? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, like his whole persona, and he's a Scorpio. You know what they say about them Scorpios? So no, yeah. tell me because I never. Yeah, you think you slick, but <laughs> you know they say the Scorpio is supposed to be good and bad, and they're good lovers, Are they? and all these things they say about Scorpios. But, Are they true? Um, and I usually get along with Scorpios very well. I've dated a few Scorpios because Scorpios and Pisces are actually like soulmates. They're high on because the Pisces are sexual too. Very sexual, yeah, yeah. So what? you and Drake together were just like a sexual energy instantly, like magnetic, like. Money long song, hours and hours and hours and right. This is so interesting. Keep going. No, I got it. <laughs> tell me more. Tell no, me more. I got, tell me more. No, so what I learned, I just I, I said to myself, what you say? Oh, this bitch met her match. <laughs> I, I thought to myself, she met her match. Mm. Like the sexual chemistry that you two exude. And but you've never seen us together. I don't have to. I know no you personally. No one ever seen us together. No one would have actually known that we dated if if someone else would have brought it out in an interview. Melissa Ford. I yeah. know. <laughs> our, 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 our good friend. <laughs> I, love I love you too, I, Melissa. No, love we love you, Melissa. Melissa Ford. Yes. By the way, y'all, Melissa's a part of our clique too. Yes. That's what y'all know. No, we're all like. Yeah, we're there's, 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 yeah, it's all one day y'all read about autobiography, child. <laughs> we Melissa was a part of the crew going to parties. That's yeah, definitely, definitely. But no, yeah, so uh, it wasn't even so there was nothing to see, and it would have never been anything to know either. When it was revealed that you dated Drake by <laughs> Melissa Ford, was he mad? Why would he be mad? Of course not. Of course he wasn't mad. Yeah. No. Like there was no phone call. Like y'all talking about me. Everybody talks about Drake. Okay. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> but how did like did he slide your DM? Like how did that? No, I met him at a club. Actually, I was at a club. I was at my section, having a good time with my girls and stuff. I was in LA. Me and Kaiser had broken up. Um, so I was like, I, I guess kindly newly fresh singled. Um, you know, he called me over to his table. We had some drinks, we exchanged numbers and stuff, and then we just started talking and FaceTiming, which I I really was a little fan down. I'm like, okay, Drake is FaceTiming me. I'm like, oh, it's Drake. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> it's Drake. <laughs> it's Drake. It's Drake. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, it was fun. It's fun. How long did y'all date? Um, um, I, a little bit over six months, not not long. Yeah. And he reply you and yeah, of course. Private. Uh, <laughs> no way, <but>, Carlo. <laughs> you want all Cause this Drake thing. doesn't fly commercial. Oh my goodness. Um, so moving right along, that was fun. That was that was fun. I had. A have time you ever been there. to his Toronto home? I have. How big is the the home? <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> Um, th- th- haven't y'all seen a home? Like, isn't a home, like, very publicized? Just the outside. Oh, just outside, not the inside. No. Well, I mean, I don't want to be talking about someone's home. No, like, you know, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful home. I learned, when I went to his home, that was the first time he had this beautiful couch there. It was um, from Restorational Hardware. And that was the first time I learned about Restorational Hardware. I was like, oh, I got to get some furniture. Now my whole house is full with Restorational he Hardware. He bought the furniture for you? I did not say that. I just said that he has a beautiful home. It was decorated nice. And um, and he made sure the home you stayed at was at least elegant enough for you to feel comfortable. No, that's not what happened. Okay, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm not going to even... Okay allude to that or okay. even make it seem like that's what happened. No, he did not do that. No, okay. he did not do that. But he has a beautiful home and he's a, he's a nice person and I enjoyed our time together. Ah, you're so giddy. What are we no, I, I, at least I'm honest about it. Yes. So, Drake, 10 out of a 10. <laughs> 10 out of a 10? I mean, he's called the certified lover boy. Does he live up to his name? You blinked first, so move on to the next question. <laughs> Would you? Well, I don't. 
I'm not going to be kissing and telling about No, I, and I don't want no, you to. I don't want you, you to. I'm not, Ray, I'm not doing none of that. No, no, I don't, I don't want you to. Okay, what Would you, you ever circle the block? No, not because of that. Um, Because he is a lover boy. And, you know, I just feel like Drake has just had uh, so many girls in the industry, not in the industry. Like, he just got all the girls. He's a lover boy. So there's... I mean, that was just fun. He's a lover boy. It's fun. It was fun for the moment. It was, you know, but I don't think Drake is a man who's going to have to want to settle down, want to be in, you know what I mean? Like, so to to say it was anything more than fun, I mean, there's yeah. nothing more to say than that because he's out here. He's, he's in the streets. I don't want to say for the streets, but. So you weren't surprised when Melissa Ford revealed that y'all were dating him at the same time? No, I, um... I wasn't surprised, but that was a whole situation. I had to come and let her know because she, yeah, you know the story. No, I don't. Oh, mm -mm. okay. Well, we'll tell you another time. No, I mean, we won't. <laughs> so what, how, how did that come? Like, did you guys like, was the mad, mad thing? Like, no, she actually, she, um, she had came over to my house one night and she was talking about her um, new relationship or this relationship. She, she was talking about, did she actually say? Oh, yeah, she actually did tell me, and I was actually getting ready to go on a date with him. So she's in my room. I'm getting dressed, and I'm about to go meet him. And and, and it was always a little weird to me. Like, she, she came over. I mean, not weird, but it, it was a little. It was just, I don't know, coincidence? I don't know. It was weird. Let's say weird, for lack of a better word. But she was just telling me about <clears throat> her situation with the guy that she was dating, and she went on to tell me it was Drake. And instead of me telling her, like, right then and there, I wanted to go and talk to him first because this wasn't the first time that me and Melissa had, um, was seen or take talking to the same guy. <laughs> and the first time we handled it, because I'm, it's always girls, you know, some girl code. I'm, it's always girl code. I'm a girl's girl. And, um, I just decided to handle it a little different this time when she told me about Drake. So when she told me what was going on, I finished getting dressed. I went on my date with him and I told him what she had just told me. And then when I left from him, I drove over to her house, knocked on her door and sat down and told her. And how did she take the news? Um, <clears throat> pretty calm. She was pretty calm. We just kind of looked at each other. We just, you know, took some deep breaths and it wasn't, you know, it was a very calm, you know, maybe shock, you know, it was, it was civil. Nobody got mad, nobody screamed, nobody cried, nobody. It was just a girl conversation, you know, we just kind of compared notes, you know, and just put it on the table. Mm -hmm. And when you told him, he, did he cop to it immediately? Uh, honestly, I really don't know. I, I think I don't really know because I wasn't really looking for his response. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just letting him know that I know and was just letting him know that I was going to say something, you know, because normally I would have just said something to her like, oh, this is what it was. But I just did it with him first and then came and did it with her because I did that the last time. And so I just switched out my um, my approach. But and in his defense, y'all weren't exclusive or were y'all? Or did you think you were? I was feeling like, I mean, yeah, you mean, yeah, he make you feel special. Like, I don't I mean, I well. I, I guess, yeah, I mean, hmm. You thought he was like, just... Yeah, because we were, like, day, like, we were talking every day. We were, like, like we were... Uh, Let me stop talking to you. How you get me back on this? No, Move the thing is that... No, it's more so about this. Okay. It's more so about the fact that he obviously is considered to be this bad my whole body language. Right! <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the way from you, Carlos. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. To the light, Caroline. Come back to the light, <laughs> right. Caroline. No, he obviously is, is this bachelor. Because the thing is this. Mm -hmm. In Drake's defense, okay. right? And and that's why I want he's not here to defend himself, mm -hmm. but I think speak, It's nothing to defend against. Speaking of, um, you know, for the man. Mm, okay, speak you know, up. Let me stand up for the man, child. Okay, stand up for the man. Because, you know, I love the girls, okay, but... What you I love the boys. I so love the thing is... <laughs> in his defense... I was wondering if he thought, I'm single and I'm just dating. Like, like, was it ever like, because one thing I know about men is 
they let you know when you're there when you're theirs. Mm-hmm. You know, gone are the days of we go together. You know, sometimes men say, look, don't I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Cause I'm trying to recall, we never I can't say it was official. I can't say he was yeah. like, You're my girlfriend. Um he made me feel special, yeah, yeah. you know, but I, I can't say that he was like, you're my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what kind of like broke us up or why I kind of like, um, not broke up, we didn't go together so we can't break up. I think that was kind of me, why I pulled back because I did come off a relationship where my ex was a boss, you know, like mm-hmm. a whole boss and we would be flying and going to meetings and he would take me, like our worlds were intertwined mm-hmm. and I was able to go to work with him like he was able to go to work with me and I think I kind of expected that when I was with Drake because like he we would be somewhere and then maybe he had to go to a meeting here to go somewhere and I'm like oh I'm not going you know because I'm used to going like I'm going everywhere you know so I maybe it was me thinking that it was more than what it was and or wanting it to be more than what it was because I was so used to being wanted to be by someone's side all the time Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what is your relationship like now with Melissa Ford? Oh, wonderful. I just talked to Melissa the other day. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen. Me and Melissa are very close. We're very close. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. So then and af- I think that's why I had the conversation with her. You know, because mm-hmm. if we weren't close, I wouldn't go to her house and sit there in, in her kitchen and have a conversation with her, you know. Like she's my friend and so that she I owed it to her to sit down and talk to her face to face and you know and even apologize for not you know waiting even though it wasn't 24 hours but you know not even telling her at that moment and handling it the way I did you know I felt like because we were close that she deserved a conversation right? and, or is this a relationship segment no I'm, I'm moving on from it okay. okay first of all I'm just talking about two relationships okay, okay, okay. don't do it okay. <laughs> so obviously listen what is your status now? Are you single? Are you dating anybody? Yeah, no, I am very much single and I'm enjoying it. Yes. So how do men date you? Do they slide in your DMs? Do they approach you at the gas station and pump your gas? Like All of the above. You know, I don't really have a problem with men approaching me. It's just, I guess, the man or the quality of man or... I back to the man, but, um, and I'm very nice, you know, people shoot they shot and I'm not, I don't, I don't have a resting bitch face, you mm-hmm. know, so I'm very nice. Like, no, thank you. You know, or, you know, I'm, I'm never trying to, I, I always try to let a guy down soft, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be a bitch out here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So since you're known to speak things into existence, mm-hmm. what type of man or husband, are you mm-hmm. looking for a husband? Yeah. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. Yeah, I'm all these things. These are my affirmations that um, I've been reciting lately. Yeah. What type of man do you want? <sighs> um, I want a man like me. <laughs> 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 uh, no, but for real, I think, you know, just a reflection of one who's passionate, someone who's dedicated, someone who's responsible, someone who's conscious, you know, someone who's a provider, someone who is caring, you know, like someone supportive, someone attractive, someone sexual, so, you know, like, I want... A Scorpio. Ah! (laughs) Does he have to be rich? You know what? I just seem to attract rich men. You really do. <laughs> I'll, listen, I, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I'll leave it at what yeah, I will say. I, no, listen. No, I, I go spill your tea. What I will say about you, my girl, I've never seen my girl without a man of means. And you, you do... In your defense, you attract them. You don't look... They come up to you. And I've I've been in situations where I was in LA once, we go to Craig's. And if you if you're in Los Angeles, Craig's is everything, right? I'm not, I'm not gonna so spill her tea. So I, I walk in, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm having a business meeting at Craig's. Uh, it's where Kyle Richards go to. 
is where all the Hollywood folks go to. <laughs> Craig's is the place. And if you know, you know. If you know, you know. know. I'll, okay, I'll let you girls know. Hey, man, girls, go to Craig's. <laughs> so I'm walking Craig's, y'all, like, <laughs> and I see my girl on a date. I'm like, Takara! And she looked like she saw a ghost. <laughs> Bitch! <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I ain't gonna say much. <laughs> I ain't gonna say much. I ain't gonna say much. I love you. Thank you. Of course, of course. <laughs> All I will say is, I was like, and girl, hook us up with one. But no, so listen, you, you keep attracting these wealthy men of all walks of life. Um, and and I and I feel that way about you is because you manifest and you I always tell my female friends this when they say I want me a rich man and I always say to, to them in response well are you what a rich man wants mm. do you have what it takes because you know you you have to be the person and become the person. Um, of who you want. You got to mm-hmm. attract that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can't both be like, eh, because, you know. Mm. Mm, right. Yeah, but no, you, and, and one thing about you, you are very submissive when it needs time to be. Mm-hmm. You're not, you, and you, you really are, are dedicated to your man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I live and in my cater- feminine energy. I'm a Pisces. I'm very yeah. feminine, very sexual. Um, like you said, I'm submissive. I love being, I love being able to be me. And I, and um, men like to support women who, who like to be in their softness. You know, they like to be masculine. I like to be feminine, but I have always, um, I've always, wealthy men have always just gravitated to me. And I've been, I guess, lucky or blessed in that kind of way, but it never, took away my determination mm. or my passion or you know um I never I never want want to necessarily be kept you know it kind of happens <laughs> it just happens that way but I think because I still fight for my independence mm-hmm. um like I said earlier when people see people men especially they want they want you to have a passion. They want you to have a dream. They want you to want to go after something or be something. And it doesn't have to be anything major. You know, if your passion is gardening, you know, or your passion is decorating or, mm-hmm. if, you know, you want to be a career woman or whatever you want to be, just as long as you're passionate about it. And then I've just always been lucky to have guys who supported me mm-hmm. and who've taken care of me. I love you so much. Yeah, no, that's been good. <laughs> that's been good. Yeah. So, wh- where are you now in terms of like your career? Are you still doing the modeling? I know you had a broad line once, and you mm-hmm. have this new. Oh, not no stop right there. Go ahead. Not broad line once. I do have a broad line. Let's talk about yes, it. Yes, I have a broad line. It's for naturally big breasted women, right? Big breasted, big breasted women. My big titty committee. <laughs> um, yeah, and I created the broad line because. It's our undergarment. Every woman has to have on a bra. Every day we put our, like you put on your drawers, we got to put on the bra. You I know? go commando. Okay, I go commando too. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> but especially, with, no, but when you're a big, busty woman, you need that support. And it's, it's your foundation. It determines on what you're going to wear, how it's going to look on you, how it's going to fit. It's like, it's a very intimate product. And when you're big busted, it's very hard to find something that supports you and that fits you well. Growing up in Ohio, I never had the right bra size. You know, you just go into these stores and you try to get the biggest size or whatever is the closest size that fit and you try to make it work. When you put on a bra that actually fits you, it is a life-changing moment. Like, you're like, oh, I didn't know that it was supposed to be separated and lived and pulled and, you know, like all these beautiful things and it gives you so much confidence. Like, mm-hmm. it just gives you so much confidence. When I do my um, fittings for my ladies for my bras and when I sell bras, people are in real tears. It's really changing their lives because a lot of women, even women who are smaller cup, who are like in their D cups, they feel when they finally maybe go to a store that does know how to measure them right or who do carry their sizes, it really changes their life because they don't understand the support 
that the bra really gives, you know? So I created this, this bra for myself, but it really has been helpful for all, for women. And where can people buy the bra? It's online, Iamtakara.com. Iamtakara.com. So you see it mm-hmm. below the screen. Mm-hmm. And you also have a new brick and mortar business. I um I'm in a wellness. I have a wellness center. Me and my sister. My sister, her name is Jamaica. So she um when I was in LA, I moved here actually to come help with the wellness business. The lady that I was telling you about when I um moved to New York that took me in when I was nine. Yes. So when she took me in when I was nine, and then I moved to New York with her, and then um she came out here, then I came out here about about a year and a half ago, and. But before that started, when I was in L.A., I was looking for something to kind of, um, you know, as a model and an actress uh, or in the entertainment business, we trying to get gig from this gig, from that gig, you know, just just really trying to figure it out. It's, it's struggling actress and struggling model is a real thing. And I was like, um, what can I do to make like some money on the side? But something that I will always want to do, you know, like just like a little side hustle. And I was like, I'm going to be a masseuse because I really like massages and I really like giving massages. So I actually went to massage class. I went to class, got certified as a massage therapist. And I was like, I can't just go out here and advertise myself as a massage therapist. Like, I'm Takara. Like, how? Like, I'm like, how do I do that? Like, I mean, I know how to do it fundamentally, but like, perception wise, yes. you know, like, and then like, and how am I going to like cipher through the men who are just trying to see me? And like, how, like, how is this really and get going a happy to work? Ending. Yeah, and get a happy ending. And right mm. now, these are real, like, how? No, that's the thing. Cause they'll, they'll think this is another form of prostitution. Of none of, right, exactly. And it was mm-hmm. like, how how is this going to work for me? I really didn't know, but I really did listen to my calling, which was like go ahead and do it. I went to school, I got certified and everything, and I and um I didn't actually work because I was like, am I gonna? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with this? But I I met this girl. Her name is I'm um, Lauren Vanderpool. She's a chef. We call her. Queen of Green. So she's a vegan chef. And me and her, we started meditating together and, you know, and just on our like conscious health stuff, you know, just taking care of ourselves, living right. She introduced me to Queen of Fua. Are you familiar with Queen of Fua? Mm-hmm. So Queen of Fua is a holistic um, <clears throat> wellness. Um, specialist and she specializes in like wound care and she has a book called The Sacred Woman. Mm. Have you heard of The Sacred mm-hmm. Woman? No, this is a big okay, this is a big thing. So your viewer is gonna know about you know about Queen of Food? Right. The Queen of Food is huge. And she does holistic health. And she had an ashram where we did like holistic food. We did um healing touch. We did um she just did all kinds of things. And our clients would be like Lauren London or Jada Pickett Smith, you know, so I started Basically, I was able to use my massaging and learn that I was a healer, that it wasn't, you know, because I didn't, it was like, God told me what to do. You're not sure what the vision is, but you just got to listen. You just got to go with it. You know what I mean? Because it was like, I didn't understand what I was really doing, but I did it anyway. And then when I met Queen of Fool, it help me tap into my power as a healer and we're all healers and learning that I really am special and that I not I mean I'm special of course but special as a healer like I have a healing touch I have healing powers and so working with her just helped me really live in that and stand in that and be confident in that because when you say things like that at first like they say say it's scared say it's shaking say it nervous mm-hmm. you know it's like at first to say like I'm a healer you don't feel that power it has you have to really live in it do the work and believe it to be like I'm a healer you know and for you too and for everybody in this room and everybody who's looking and listening we are all healers and the more that you work on your craft or whatever that may be the more that you can stand in the power of knowing your true power Mm. of you being a healer and so working with her just gave me that confidence and when my sister opened up her wellness center here in Smyrna then I came down to help her and so I do that and I do sound therapy I do um, massage therapy and we just do holistic health there all in general like Reiki, Chakra alignment, um, yoga classes. We do all different holistic um, modalities there. So that's where I'm at in my life right now. I do a soulful stillness rendezvous meditation. I do it every third Sunday. So this Sunday, um, I'm going to be doing one. If you're in town, I want to invite you to come. Mm. Um, And so I do like guided meditation. I do mirror work. I do sound therapy. And um, 
that's really where I am in my life. I'm really that's that's where I'm at right now. And where can people find this location and and you know go? It's in Smyrna, Georgia. It's right um, on Cumberland Highway, seventeen twenty five. And what's it called? Highway. It's called the Healing Environment. Okay. And they can Google it in case they want they to come. They can Google it or they a lot can follow of me on people my... will fly to Atlanta to, to go. Yeah, oh no. And my turnout's been so great. This, um, for the summer though, I'm doing my, my activations at the river. And then also I'm doing it in different cities too so because it's been doing so well. So now I'm going to take it on the road. So my goal is to have one in New York, LA, Atlanta, Miami. So every like Sunday I should be in a different city doing my sound therapy, doing my meditation. I've been invited to do events for like corporate companies and things like that. So it's really been taken off. It's really been good. And and I think it goes great with my brand because um, being introduced to the world as Takara from America's Next Top Model and standing for women and their confidence and changing their lives and making them feel good, you know, and then mm-hmm. going into bras and changing their lives and making them feel good and now actually putting my hands on you or giving you some healing vibrations. So it's like my whole brand has always kind of been about making people feel good and uplifting them and, and helping them touch into their true power. You've seen me being so confident, help them to be confident or me actually, you know, giving them some sound therapy or me actually putting a bra on them, you know? So I'm all about positivity, uplifting. <laughs> you Do you know? think a lot of that comes from, you know, being emancipated from your parents? Like how does that, how, how <laughs> does a child even come to that? You're right. It, it did. It, it's because, um, <clears throat> Yeah, I I feel, I feel my story that I was alone. You know, I came, I was born in 82, so um, that was the crack era. So both of my parents were addicted to drugs. And then um, my grandmother and my uncles and everybody, we were just living a fast life. If they weren't on drugs, they were selling drugs or they were pimps or, you know, like I just, and, and when you're like the oldest child, you kind of, grow up with them because they're still young too you know they're Mm -hmm. still trying to figure it out so you're around like all these things and then when you have a drug like crack what makes you sell your everything you know what I'm saying your home your TV steal from your children you know what I mean just make you just like rock bottom lose your home be homeless on the street in the crack house like it's so when I come from things like that at a very young age I had to realize that i I can't care about what people think about me or how I'm perceived or, you know, I I just had to, I had, you know what happened? Really, one day when I was very young, um, something happened. We were, I, I, something happened. I ran up the stairs. I went into my room and I shut my door. And I was crying, and I seen all of these clouds like come down. It was like all these clouds from the from the roof, from the ceiling. It was like from the ceiling, like this. It's just clouds start coming down in my room. Clouds, 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 and these clouds was piling up. All these clouds was piling up in my room. And the next thing I know, I'm just standing there because I'm like in shock. I'm in this. I don't know what's going on. These clouds are piling up, and the clouds formed into a man. And this man was on his knees, and he was praying. And I could see it. It was like a sculpture of clouds, but it was very um, detailed. Like mm-hmm. I could see the eyes, the beard, the hands, the finger. I could see everything. And I and then I screamed and I ran out and I came downstairs, go upstairs and shut the door and see if you see the clouds. Da, 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 da. But I think that was God or you know the Spirit coming and praying over me or protecting me or telling me like you're safe, you're okay. Like I, I just always knew from that moment on that I'm favored. Mm-hmm. I don't take it for granted, and I also know that favor is not fair. But I also know that I have it. And I try to use it in the in the best way possible. Uh, and you, how old were you when you were officially emancipated from? Your I was fourteen. I ran away. From, what happened was my grandmother, that lady right there. My grandmother, she um, she took me and my brother down to the jailhouse. And this that's what I'm, she took us down to the jailhouse. You remember the show Scared Straight? Yeah. I think this was before Scared Straight. I think this was like a a test dummy for that because she took us down there. She took us the officers took us into a back room, put us in a cell, locked us up and came a drill sergeant came in my face. He was yelling at me telling you need to do this you need to do da, 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 and I'm yelling back and I'm screaming at him and he leaves and he comes back in and then he sits down and he says 
excuse me. He says, your grandmother says you're a good child and you can go home. You just need to wash the dishes. I love your watch. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, nice. That's an attraction. <laughs> <laughs> it's very subtle. It works. <laughs> No, but he seems like, you know, you just need to do your dishes and that. And I knew that because I was a good child. My grandmother was just mad because she, she didn't like the way I washed dishes. But the thing is, my grandmother didn't teach me how to do anything. Like, she just expected me to take care of myself. She wasn't teaching me how to bathe correctly or how to wash my clothes, how to comb my hair. She wasn't making sure my homework was done. You know, she just, I was neglected a lot. And when he came and told me that, you know, you can go home, I said, I don't want to go home. And he said, well, you can't stay here. And I said, well, I don't want to go home. He said, well, you're going to have to go to a, uh, a shelter. you have to go to a runaway shelter. I said, that's fine. He said, you're going to go to a runaway? I said, yeah. So I went to a runaway shelter. At 14. At 14, I went to a runaway shelter. And at that shelter, they got programs for kids who don't have a home, who's homeless. Who's, I'm considered homeless now because I didn't want to go home. I felt unsafe there. I didn't, I didn't want to be there. And so then they started enrolling me into programs. And one of the programs was emancipation. And then they helped me find my place. Um, I got a place when I was 15. I was able to get all my electric, gas, water, everything in my name. I've been having all my bills in my name since I was 15 years old. Wow. Yeah. And your siblings were still... Yeah, my siblings, they would come over. I was 16, she was 6. And then she got right there because she'd tell you the whole story. Wow. <laughs> I was raising kids. I had a baby. My, me and my sister's 10 years apart. So she's like my sister daughter, you know. And I was raising her. My, my brother, he's two years younger than me. So I've always... I was the mother because, once again, my parents were on drugs. And my other... My grandmother, who was supposed to be raising me, she was like my age. She was 40 with grandkids. She was hot. She was looking like this out in the street. She had a husband that was from Cuba. She, you know what I'm saying? She had a Cadillac. She wasn't trying to raise no kids. She was out here popping the thigh. I don't know how she feel now. Like, Shit, if I had some brown babies at this age, I'd be like, oh no. Oh, you, know? you know, and I love them to death because you got to have grace. You know, you got to have forgiveness. I was listening to Eric Thomas this morning and, um, mm. He was saying that do you you talking about scars? He was like, You got scars, I got scars, I got scar on my eyes, scar here, scar on my hair, I got scars everywhere. And he was like, You remember when you got those scars? I'm like, Really? I don't remember. Have or how people are like, Oh, you got that scar. Mm -hmm. You don't know. It's like because you've been healed from it. Because you're moving forward. You're not stuck. I'm not stuck in the past. I'm not stuck thinking about, oh, this happened when mm -hmm. I was seven years old. And I'll never forget that day when they hurt me so bad. And this happened when she did this to me and mm -hmm. da 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 da. Because I've truly healed and I forgave and I forgive my mother and my father and my grandmother and all because I know that they were just trying to do the best that they mm -hmm. could do I mean in the moments it hurt and I cried and it was painful but as an adult and being able to live life I have compassion I have compassion mm -hmm. for them I have grace for them and I love them and I'm thankful for life and so I don't hold none of, none of those things against them I don't hold them towards the fire and I don't bring it up and try to make them feel some kind mm -hmm. of way about it you know I love them and they're good your, your parents um no my parents are not good mm -hmm. no my parents are not good but they're better than what they were okay yeah 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 and they're and, proud of you and I'm proud of them too yeah yeah. My sister, <laughs> my, I, listen, you don't do interviews at all. Baby. <laughs> like, you don't do them at all. And I love the fact that you decided to do it with me. You know how much you mean to me. Oh, and we need to get you back on TV. Yes, I'm going to do your show. Ah! I'm going to do your show. <laughs> Yes, I'm ready. I'm in Atlanta. I'm, life is good. I bought me a home. I'm a homeowner now. Where you live? Where, where, where? Uh, I told you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let you know. Come over. I got a nice house. Oh, yeah. well, I do too. Well, okay, well, let's ah. do it then. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> let's do it then, honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll go over each other's home. Yes, yes. And we will conceptualize something. Yes. Okay. So we have something for the Deal. girls. Yes. Something for the girls. Yes. Deal. They come up with a master plan. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you, boo. Thank you, baby. <laughs>